Yes. And right now we're joined with the latest celebrity turned politician, Olubankole Wellington is his name, and lots of you know him and love him as Banky W. I'm sure you still love Olubankole Wellington, but today we're going to get to know that person more. Good Hi. to have you. Good to see you. Oh, it's a pleasure. Welcome. How's it going? Very, Very well, well, thank you. Happy to be here. Ah. Yeah, it's always it's a pleasure to have you. Maybe I should start with the last video, Dreams. Okay. I want to know what Olubankole Wellington's dreams were as a little boy. We know what your dreams are now. What my dreams but were. But what your dreams were as a little boy. Honestly, my dreams as a little boy um, were everything that I'm doing right now. Oh. I dreamt of being a musician. I dreamt of being an actor, a filmmaker. I dreamt of being a businessman. I dreamt of being a leader. I dreamt of doing everything that I'm doing now, which is why I tell parents all the time that watch your children very well. By the time they're, you know, when they're young, in their early teenage years, you might start seeing signs of what they might end up becoming. So if you see those things, encourage that. You know, it, it's not necessary. I went to school for engineering. I studied engineering. But obviously, it was the things that I fell in love with and the passion that God placed inside of me when I was a teenager that ended up being what I'm doing today. Yeah. So. Okay, so yeah. I'm happy that you actually mentioned this. I saw um, and listened to you when you came on Live Your Dreams Africa. Oh, yes. yes. Okay, that was a great, great event. Shout yes, out to it Bob was. Williams. I also yeah. listened to her too, by the way. <laughs> nice, was, nice. I've, I've watched that too much. Now, <laughs> now, my point is I remember when you stated to every young person in that room about mm. your struggles, how you had to mm. sell CDs, mm -hmm. you know, while in school, mm -hmm. from your car, mm. and how some, at some point you talked about being homeless, Mm, and people, yeah. some people went like, they not resemble that kind of person, mm, you know. And mm. you actually laid out all the things you had gone through. Mm. Now, looking at that, how has that made you? I know you've talked about it, but I mm. still want people to hear of it. Yeah. Because I want people to know Banky. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I, I need to correct the impression. I don't think I was ever homeless, like okay. sleeping on the streets, homeless. Mm. Um, but there were periods in my life where I was staying with people, staying with relatives, staying with friends and all mm -hmm. of that. So I, I want to be very careful that I don't yeah. um, allow, you know, the wrong, the wrong statements to go out there. Um, but yeah, you know, thank God we don't look like what we've been through, right? Like, thank God it's, you're not necessarily a reflection physically of some of the things that you've been through. Standing, I mean, sitting before you now, I'm the same person who's battled cancer three times. I'm the same person who's at some points in my life, I've been so broke that I've been living with people. Um, at some points, you know, when I moved back from Yankee to Nigeria, in the first year and a half of trying to do music, I was borrowing, after like the first year, all the money I had saved, I had spent it on everything. And I was borrowing 5K every week with no intention of paying back from my manager at the time, just to put, you know, recharge cards in the car and, you know, just to get around Lagos to try and push the music. Um, I've been... I've been kidnapped by armed robbers and roughed up. You know, I've, I've, I've been through some things. But, you know, at the end of the day, I think that tough times come to make you stronger. I think as long as you don't die, then you have a reason to hold on another day. As long as mm. there's still breath in your lungs, you have a reason to hold on to hope and to believe that, you know what, it can get better. Because at the end of the day, once you hit rock bottom, you know it can't get any worse, right? So... Once you've hit rock bottom, the only place there is to go is up. So you just have to have that mentality and that optimism that it can turn around. And, and my life story is, that's my life story. It's just kind of dreaming big dreams and holding on to them and determining that you're not going to let go of it until you start to see them come true. Speaking mm. about, uh, you know, having survived and dealt with cancer three times, we know that now we're seeing a lot of increase. Um, there's been a rise with the number of people that are leaving and dealing and battling cancer. Mm -hmm. At the time, what were some of the thoughts that went through your mind? How were you able to still hold on? Yeah. Because I'm asking this because I know quite a number of people who are leaving with cancer now yeah. and are losing hope. And I yeah. get messages of pray for me. And yeah. The doctor says I have a few days. Yeah. So what would you say to such a person if you had the opportunity to speak to them? Um, man, you know, this is, this is a very sensitive topic and, you know, there are a hundred different types of cancer and people are at various points in their struggles. So I, I try to be careful when I'm speaking on this because I consider myself very fortunate uh, in terms of early detection, in terms of being blessed, in able, uh, blessed enough to be able to afford the surgery and the treatment that I had to go through. Um, and some people, unfortunately, are not that, you know, they're not in that space. Mm. Um, what I will say, though, is that I, I believe a lot of times God allows certain people to go through things so that he can use you as an example to somebody else mm. to say that if I went through it and I came out the other side, then you can too. 
and it's not a death sentence and you you need to keep believing i mean my uh, you know I, it sounds cliche you know people say these kinds of things all the time you hear them in motivational conferences and don't give up and hold on to faith but honestly that's what's been true for me is just having faith and believing that this thing can turn around and that this is not the end um, so for me it's it's really it's all in it's it's that mindset it's that faith it's that hope it's that determination it's that being resolute that whatever it is that I'm going through now tomorrow is another day to get it right okay well still on your yeah. health um, yeah. I remember Banky the guy who was dropping hits back mm. to back over the years mm. you know like we we would try to get over this song and then something else comes in and everybody's like oh he's killing us again and then you know the health thing came up and then there was this time when we didn't get to hear from you for a while and you know some people didn't actually catch the information on time and we wondered what was going on now you as a person how did it feel for you going through that when you knew this wasn't you on a normal day. You were mm. a hit maker. Mm. You were a businessman. And this is what you were used to. Mm. But it wasn't happening. How did you feel in that space? Um, you know, I think that, that um, when you're going through something, the important thing is to kind of keep your eyes on the finish line and to just keep going through. Like, you, you, the key is not to, to don't stay in a sunken place because nothing good happens there. So even mentally and everything that you're doing is just to keep moving forward. You know, even if it's one step at a time, you know, at the times that I've, I've had to recover and all of that, you know, you, you end up having to take a, um, a lot of time off of work and off the things that you're normally able to do. Um, but in your mind, in your mind space, that's where you can keep staying optimistic. Even if things are not looking like that in the physical, you can still kind of think yourself through it. Um, and that's what my life story is. I keep saying it. I mean, my story is one of believing in God, believing in myself, never giving up on my dreams, and just not taking no for an answer, and just yeah. sticking through it. That's it. You're a multifaceted human being. There's several things that you do, you know. But in the past two years, there's been a drastic change in your life, mm -hmm. you know, from single to marriage. Are you marriage? trying to hint on, hint on my marriage? I know. <laughs> Politician. So let's go back to the first time you told your wife that you wanted to run for office. Yeah. How was her reaction? Uh, her immediate reaction was that she said, um, I know you, I know the heart you have, and I know your work ethic, and I know that if given the opportunity, you would do a phenomenal job in office. But my fear is that politics in Nigeria is very um, dirty and very dangerous, and I don't want anything to harm you, and I don't want anything to soil you. And that's what she said to me. And I said, well, you know, it's true. Politics is dirty and dangerous, but that's because the good people always avoid it. So if, you know, I, I said, look at our network of friends and, you know, the people that we know that have achieved great things, the people who've built companies, the people who've empowered young people, the people who've found a way to, to create success in Nigeria. Look at all, all of us. None of us would touch politics with a 10-foot pole. So if all of us are sitting back and saying, oh, no, 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 it's dirty and it's dangerous, then who are we expecting to come along to try and fix it? Because all of us, guess what? We're all sitting down and complaining about the system. But then not enough of us are saying, okay, let me get in here and do this. And, you know, it, I thought it was great that there were a lot of people running for president, you know, some of the people that I really like. But I also felt like, you know, some people in our generation, the brightest amongst us, need to come to the table and start infiltrating government at multiple levels and getting into the House, the House of Assembly, yeah. State, um, the House of Representatives, yeah. the Senate, the local government chairman. Let's infiltrate the system with the brightest minds that we have. And those like minds can work together. And that's how we can start to turn the country around one community at a time. So I think after that sale, she was OK. OK, well, I think yeah. I, I would want to tilt a bit to your wife's talk. OK. Yes. Now, we've had people who have come into government with good intentions. Mm -hmm. Some, we've seen them from the beginning. Mm -hmm. I remember the story of Basu Naji, who was the former minister for power. Okay. And I remember that he had to resign because he wanted to retain his integrity at that mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Now. For the people who still wanted to remain clean, mm -hmm. like your wife was talking about, being mm -hmm. soiled, some had to walk away. Mm. Now, my question is, what are the things you plan to do mm. to remain you and still operate in office? Well, the way so, 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 so for me, I think that, um, first of all, the, the path that I'm taking to get into office is the more difficult path, right? Because I'm not you know, a candidate of one of the major parties, is a movement that is 
for and by and with young people in the community. It's not, there's no sponsor. Like, I, I, I still marvel at how we've been able to survive the last three months with all, with how expensive this race is, but how God has kind of kept, he's just kept meeting us at every point of our needs. But that path to get into office is much more difficult and it's very intentional because we want to get into office off the strength of our own ideas and our vision and getting into office with the community as our ogre, not any sponsor or any one person who you have to answer to. Um, and for people that did it that way, that's fine, but we've decided that we want to, be, we want to answer to the community. And so I don't know that I have the opportunity to get in there and change on people. I don't have the opportunity to get in there and f change my mouth and become corrupt. Because it's the people that put me there and it's the people, it's the people that put you in the politics that you answer to. And they're the ones that have the power to take you out. Because he who plays the piper takes the tune. takes the tune. And I think that, honestly, I think we need to become a one-term government country until we get people that deserve a second go around. We need to... Government is not automatic. It's nobody's birthright. It's not because you have been there before, your father was there before that you should get. No, it doesn't work like, it shouldn't work like that anymore. And so even me, if I get in there and I change on the people that allowed me to come in, on the people of Etiosa, then I expect those people to remove me and to never give me a second opportunity because that's what we need to, that's where we need to get to as a country. Pretty daring and very, yeah. very um, nice. interesting. Let's talk about how your running for office has affected you. The side we don't get to see, you mm. know, the struggles you've had to go through, mm. how this has affected your personal life, you mm. know. Tell us about it. Ah, how much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's been interesting. It's been, it's been uh, a very, very, it's been a tale of two sides, really, the last few months. On the one hand, it's been unarguably the most difficult three, four month journey that I've been on. It's tedious, it's expensive, it's stressful, it's draining. Sometimes you come home from a long day of trying to campaign and go door to door, that you're actually broken. And not just by what you've put yourself through physically, but also almost emotionally broken because you see so much need and you see so much lack, you see so much poverty, you see some of the most deplorable living conditions right here in Lagos, in Etiosa. And so on the one hand, it's, it, it, it takes a lot out of you. But on the, on the flip side, it's unequivocally one of the most fulfilling journeys I've ever been on. It's eye-opening. It's enlightening. You learn, I've learned more about people in three months or three to four months of doing politics than I have in some years put together. And that's people in the grassroots. Mm people in your network, people that you think are friends that are not necessarily, the people, just people, the, the, the psyche of people, the mentality of people. And then, and then you start to realize that this, this battle that we're in in Nigeria, is, it's, it's not a battle between the two major parties. It's, it's, on the one hand, it's a battle between kind of the, the ruling class that has been in control of Nigeria forever and everybody else. But also on the, on the flip side, it's a battle against a mentality. Because mm. you see that mentality, you see it. You see that apathy, you see that, eh, they go do it and they won't do it. And people don't realize that it is in that apathy that we've allowed our country to be the way that it is. And so this has been a difficult journey, but it's been a very inspiring one. It's one that I wouldn't have traded. I would do it all again in a heartbeat because I can see the seed being planted. I can see it in the faces of our volunteers. I can see it in the faces of the mothers that we talk to in the community who just want a future for their children. I can see it <clears throat> in this generation. Even people who ordinarily, sometimes we get to a place and they start by saying, ah, wait till you bring home, wait till you bring home. By the time we're leaving, they're saying nobody here should collect anything from this guy because they re young Nigerians are starting to realize that this is, this is about so much more. Mm -hmm. It's so much more than your next meal. It's so much more than... 500 naira or two uh, derikas of rice. It's so much more than that. This is about changing the narrative of our country and, and hopefully creating a pathway to a better future. And that's inspiring. And that, for me, is... It's, it's about impact now. For and me. you, I feel you like are I'm doing that, you know, from yeah. all that you've Sorry, been I talk too much. No, you've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> no, it's fine. You've been doing this for a long time, creating impact with all that you do. Yeah. Today's conversation was supposed to be about Banky W. We wanted to veer off a little from politics okay. to get to see the man behind. But of course, in these days, it's almost Invariably impossible it ends up back to talk here. about you without talking about politics. Yeah. So if you had, 
you know, the opportunity to speak to everybody whom you wanted to vote for you. Mm. Why would you say they should vote for you over anybody else? Because at the end of the day, we're seeing a, this is the most I've seen young people participating mm -hmm. in elections mm -hmm. or wanting to vote. But there are several issues that have been discouraging them. Mm -hmm. Issues of people, credibility, the fact that even the postponement of, you know, the elections weaken a lot of people's morals. So yeah. why would you say one should vote you? Well, I would say, um, first of all, I, I want to quickly address um, people's morals um, and, and the feeling that... Can I, can I go ahead? Okay. Uh, the feeling that that um, people tend to have now, which is that... Okay. The feeling that people tend to have now, which is that, um, you know, it's always going to be like this, it's, uh, you know, you see, they have postponed their elections, you know, there's no point anymore. Just that, that feeling of being kind of demoralized um, mm. based on recent events. And I want people to understand that if... Now more than ever, this is the time to dig deep. This is the time to stand firm. This is the time to have faith. This is the time to show up because the worst that could possibly happen has happened. So now let's, let's now move forward. This is the time to hold on to faith that these things are possible. Um, you know, politics is a game of numbers. I've said this many times over. In 2015, there were 250,000 eligible voters, over 250,000 eligible mm -hmm. voters in Etiosa, only 56,000 bothered to vote for House of Reps. It was one with 28,000 votes. So it is in us saying, ah, you know, don't worry, da, da, da. Then the numbers that come out are now so small, and somebody can go and pay 10,000 people 1,000 naira and rice, and they will determine who the leaders are for the next four years. So for people who know better, who should know better, it's time for us to do better. Brilliant. Um, and then as far as I go, you know, you, uh, hopefully by now people know my character, they know the things that I believe in, they know the things that I stand for, and hopefully they'll give me a chance to prove, to show and prove what a representative of a community should, be about. should look like and should do. And Fingers should be crossed. About. We wish you all the best. You thank know, we're going to the polls in a bit, and we wish you all the best in this regard. I but thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. To enjoy more of this, our Ogunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.